Welcome back to Fly Fishing Rutland Water. Um, I'm not actually fishing today, um, but I want to tell you the story about the day's fishing that I had yesterday. Yesterday was one of those magical days fishing that kind of comes around once in a lifetime. Um, I was out fishing with a friend of mine, Andrew Laird. Um, I met Andrew uh, while filming on the channel a couple of times, and we met on the bank a few times, and have since then we've actually gone and done a few boat trips together and I've had some excellent fishing trips with Andrew and Drake it and, and, and on here in Rutland now obviously I don't film when I'm out social fishing yesterday we decided to come here now this is a spot known as Spud Bay now there's been fish in and around here for about a week now and they've been feeding in and around the weed beds um, the anglers kind of know about this. There's been quite a few boats in here, but it's it's very quiet today. Um, but we know there's fish cruising in and around the weed beds. Well, I fished another spot just around the corner um, that's called Maytree Bank or Road End, depending on what, what you call it. Uh, but it's basically the, the end of the old road that now runs into the water at the end of the peninsula. There's a couple of great spots around there. And I've fished there about three or four times this week. I've not caught anything, but I've had a lot of follows. The fish have been following the flies in, but not taking. Very much like they've done at other spots that, that I've fished at, at, at this time of the season. So we started here, and the spot we fished was next to that black boy. We decided to anchor in the bay, and within less than half an hour, I hooked into the fish of a lifetime. I was pulling the fly in, and I saw this massive bow wave behind the fly. And then I speeded the fly up again and then stopped. And the next thing I knew, this big dorsal fin came out of the water, followed by a massive tail as the fish came up and over and took the fly down to the depths. Uh, we knew it was a big fish right away. And, and it was a massive brown trout. I played it for, God, what felt like an age. Now, if you hook a double figure fish on a five weight rod, boy, are you going to know about it. Um, it took the fly deep down. It was like hooking into a bar of lead. These big fish don't really move. They don't thrash about and fight. They just kind of sit static in the water because they're, they're big beasts and they've got that momentum to be able to do that. It kind of swam around a little bit, but I knew the fish wasn't tiring because it wasn't moving anything like fast enough. Anyway, I played it for what seemed like an age, finally got it up to the surface, then it went down again, then I got it back up to the surface, and I literally had a chance to bring it over the net and get it into the net, but I missed it because I made one fatal mistake. I hadn't set the net up properly before starting to fish. So the net wasn't extended. So when the fish came over up in the water, if that net had been extended, it would have been easy to get the net under the fish and get it out of the water. Now, subsequently, the fish came off. Um, and I have to say, I felt absolutely awful. It's really hard to describe those moments when you lose a really, really big fish. Um, it, it kind of feels like, it doesn't feel like the world's come to an end, but you kind of have a low feeling that's really hard to describe. Um, so Andrew and I, I then, I, I then went to phone my wife and realised I'd left my phone in the car. So I decided to go into the lodge. Um, and I ended up buying another Hardy Wraith rod. I bought uh, the last one they have in stock, the uh, seven weight, 10 foot rod. So I've now got uh, I've, I've now got a five weight, nine foot wraith. I've got a 10 foot, six weight hardy ultralight and a 10 foot, seven weight hardy wraith. So it's a nice range of rods now that should see me to the end of my fishing years. Um, after we stopped there, we went into the other spot and I got another couple of rainbows in and around this area, but we decided to go somewhere else. So the place we went next it was Normanton Bank, because I had a great session there last week, so we thought, well, let's go down to Normanton and see what happens down there. Now, the second trout took here, in this spot here. It's one of my favorite drifts. Basically, you line up 
between the V-boy and the red boy. And depending on where you position the boat at the beginning of the drift, that determines the angle that you come into the bank. Now, I, I always kind of favour that red boy. I don't know what it is about that red boy, but I've had an awful lot of fish when I've started my drift to the right of that left boy, probably about 15 to 20 yards out from it, and then drift into the Normanton bank. What that does is it brings you in over the drop-off and then into the weed beds. And the big brown that I landed took just as we came into the weed beds in that particular bay. It was an absolutely ferocious take. Uh, and it was quite interesting because I did have an, a lot of rainbows yesterday as well. But the rainbows were kind of coming and nipping at the fly but not taken. They were kind of following and boiling. And the only way I got the rainbows to take was by stripping the fly away from them just as they came to the boil. Now I was using a popper minke for most of the day. Quite a small one. But the brown trout, both of them, all I saw was the dorsal fin and then the fish going down with a big tail sticking out of the water. So the brown trout were feeding on fry. That's why they were attacking the popper fry. But the rainbow trout weren't. The rainbow trout were feeding on other things that were in the weed. Things like snails, there was shrimps. The weed, when I pulled off the anchor was absolutely filled with everything other than pin fry. So the rainbows seem to be feeding in the beds, but they're not feeding on fry. The brown trout are feeding in the beds and they are feeding on fry. I have to thank my friend Andrew, um, who managed to get the, the fish on film. He got both of the fish on film. I didn't realize he was using his camera. I was so focused on playing the fish under extreme pressure, you have no idea how the heart goes when you hook into a big fish like that. Um, but Andrew did a cracking job of actually getting some footage of me actually catching the fish. He got a brilliant take of me holding the fish. And that's a photograph that I'm going to treasure for the rest of my life. But the footage of me releasing the fish back into the water is absolutely brilliant. It really shows you just how big that fish was. When you look at the footage, when I'm holding it in the water, the width of the back is quite astounding. I couldn't realize, I couldn't understand why it felt so heavy in the neck, because it was long, but it wasn't shark long. But it was the fact that it was so broad across the back, that's where all the weight was in the fish. And you see that when it swims away in the water. Thanks for coming out with me not fly fishing on Rutland Water this morning, but recounting my tales of fly fishing the previous day. Um, if you like the video, please make sure you hit the like button, and I would be delighted if you would subscribe to the channel to see more of my fishy adventures. Thanks for watching.